Hello and welcome to Each Backyard, my YouTube channel, where I share my permaculture backyard food forest setup with you, and I hope to inspire you to consider or do the same. And this is part of a long journey to get to the state that I'm in now, and I love sharing the little things that I've discovered. Hopefully they'll be useful to you. If you like these kinds of videos, please give the video a thumbs up. It helps me know to make more of this type of content. Also, if you want to support the channel, you can use, anytime you go to Amazon, just go to any video on Eat Your Backyard, click on the Amazon links to the plants and seeds and things that I link to, and that supports the channel. Those are affiliate links, and they're, uh, a small portion goes back to the channel, but it doesn't cost you anything extra. Okay, so there are the ads. Also, some news for Eat Your Backyard viewers, new and old. is that I'm considering making a t-shirt. So let me know if you think that's something you'd be interested in. I am getting ready to do that. Anyway, I have been eating eggs now from these little permaculture chickens for an entire week. And I was absolutely blown away by the effect of that. Now these permaculture chickens are, I call them permaculture chickens because of, of a few reasons. They're completely integrated into the systems back here in this yard. A very unique and special high powered egg. There are, generally speaking, according to Healthline, there are four types of eggs. There's the commercial egg that's fed grain. The second type of egg is the organic egg. You know, that's no antibiotics and artificial stuff. Well, these are definitely organic. We feed them only organic feed and no antibiotics. The third type is pasteurized. And that's if they eat, you know, uh, plants, uh, live plants and bugs. And you could see they do plenty of that. In fact, they're eating bugs all the time. And so these are also permacultured eggs. Now, the fourth type of egg is the omega-3 egg, meaning it contains omega-3 fatty acids. Now, I believe their eggs already do because purslane, the native edible purslane, which they eat and seek out, by the way, all throughout the yard as they go throughout the larger yard, purslane contains omega-3 fatty acids, which are critical to your health. There are a lot of things like walnuts and salmon, but they can be super rich in these eggs. And the way that I, how I'm going to ensure that they are also omega-3 eggs is by starting to feed them flax seed. So flax seed is rich in omega-3, the, the stuff that's used to make omega-3 in these birds' eggs. And uh, so if you feed them that, you, you've got the omega-3 eggs as well. Also been doing a lot of research on eating eating eggs, you know, as so I decided, well, maybe I'm going to start eating eggs every day. Is that healthy? And as it turns out, everything I could find on the American Heart Association and Healthline and all these different places, but check for yourself, was that eggs are super healthy for you. They reduce your bad cholesterol, increase your good cholesterol, which you need, give you protein. They basically give you the perfect balance of minerals and nutrients uh, that your body needs and they're very good for you in fact in the united kingdom they their health department basically stated that you should just eat as many eggs as you want that's how healthy you know um, they're considered in some areas but they have not only protein in the eggs they also have all kinds of vitamins like vitamin d which is just so critical most people are vitamin d deficient Sometimes it's good to just stop listening to the birds. Yeah, so vitamin D. Another thing that are in these little miracle birds' eggs are is iron. Iron can be a deficiency. So it basically, the eggs give you everything you need. And uh, they're very low calorie nutrients. So they are the lowest calorie uh, 
lowest calorie for the densest nutrient concentration of any food on earth is what I've found in my research. So you, you have the fewest calories, but the highest nutrition. It's incredible. So I decided, topic of this live stream this morning, I decided to eat eggs from these beautiful little hens for an entire week. Oh, the other thing is we try to get, besides they have access to all these wild, you know, weeds and things growing around that I throw in there all the time, but also all these bugs, we feed them these grub terra black fly soldier larva grubs, which, which are super high in all kinds of nutrients. And you can see as I shake the cup, oh, honey girls, the hens just, whoa, they'll knock it right out of your hand to get it. It's so excited. Oh no, Blondie's trapped on the other side of the fence. Oh, Blondie knows how to fly out on top of the worm farm here. By the way, I use that worm farm for, I'll get you over on the other side. Look at this, these chickens are so tame, I can pick them up with one hand. There you go, oof. Yeah. The other chicks don't know, the other chickens don't know that I've got these scrubs. I'll give my, my chicken call. This is the, my chicken call. Yeah, chick, chick. Yeah, chick, chick. Yeah, chick, chick. Oh, here we go. Yeah, chick, chick. How many do we have? I only have four. Yeah, chick, chick. Well, I guess one chicken misses out. I don't know how it is. I like to spread out the grubs so that they don't have to kind of fight over them. And I think it makes it more interesting when they kind of have to search for them. Oh, there's the other one inside the coop. She can't figure out how to get out. Classic chicken moment. Look at that. How do I get to it? Just walk out the open door right behind you. Believe in yourself. You're gonna miss out on all the grub larva. Mm. Well, and eventually they get frenzied enough usually to make it out of the coop to get to it, but I don't know that she's gonna get in on the, on the grub party. So yeah, I, uh, I have been fasting for years now, intermittent fasting, and um, that works pretty well for me, but it really does, ooh, you see that? <laughs> that little golden bird pecked the barred rock. You got too close to the worm. But I've been fasting, so I haven't been eating breakfast for a long time, and I, I never found like the typical breakfast made me feel that good, like you know, high in like breads and stuff, like bagels and all that kind of stuff. So I, did, I don't mind missing it. Well, so I decided. Well, I'm going to try. Some of the research I've been reading says that uh, having protein in the morning is really critical to your health, specifically related to muscle function and muscle regeneration and muscle muscle building, which is you know basically to say that's you're, you'll have energy so I decided to start consuming protein and the research indicated that between the hours of 7 and 11 was the right window to ingest the protein now eggs contain the perfect balance of all proteins all these amino acids including things like choline and uh, just all kinds of minerals and things you need that you get completely in the right amounts in the egg so it's the best th best kind of protein to put into this context. So every morning now for the last uh, week, I've been eating two eggs a day. And uh, also, by the way, I'll mention one more detail. The research I uh, did indicated that the lower that the high heat cooking of eggs can. Okay, hold on. I'll give. I'll start from the beginning. Cooking eggs transforms the protein chains inside the eggs into transition into forming new chains which are easier for you to digest so it's good to cook them uh, however you the way to not go too far you reach a point where they start to, you start to lose the protein that you start to lose some of the value of it nutritionally 
And the way to resolve that is to cook them, not overcook them. So here's, I've been cooking all their eggs now poached, which is, uh, you know, just enough to like parboil them. I don't have, it's not like runny inside the egg, but just, just barely firm type of thing. And oh man, they're so good. So I have two of those and here's what I've been eating them with. One toasted English muffin and a few slices of fresh avocado. And that is like a little slice of heaven. That's a pathway to Zen right there for food. Holy moly, it's so good. It's one of my favorite things I could imagine eating is the flavor of that English muffin, parboiled, uh, you know, poached fresh eggs, super fresh eggs. By the way, I can, now I have access to eggs that are like most mornings, I've just come out and taken the eggs out and eaten them directly from the, so they were just laid and then, so they are the freshest possible situation. So when you drop those eggs into the pan for poaching, they uh, form up in the perfect shape of an egg. They don't have tons of that wispy stuff in the, it's just incredible and so easy to do. So I just put a little salt and some, and some uh, simmering water and uh, I cook them for about three to four minutes. I just feel for firmness. I have a little uh, small colander-like spoon that I use to kind of fish them out and just feel them. Ooh, ooh look, they're looking for the last of the worms. It's getting serious. And uh, that's about it. So here's the result though. I, here's my result. And I tried this with two of my other friends who I gave a dozen eggs to each. And I can tell you what their result was. Every day after I eat these eggs, I felt an immediate surge in energy about five minutes afterwards. And I'm not exaggerating when I say to feel almost a tingling sensation in your fingers from the effect of the egg. Uh, in terms of my, you know, kind of uh, mental state, I immediately felt more relaxed. I felt more content. Uh, and that correlates well with the kind of research on what these nutrients do to help brain function. Look at that, see? Blondie, you're an escape artist. Oh, come on now, is it really like that? Oh, you think I have more in this cup? Yeah, look in there, nothing in there. See? chicken. Blondie is just like a pet chicken. She just runs to you no matter where you are. She can be a little loud. Come here. Carry a chicken around in the live stream. Why not? Anyway, so... Yeah, okay, so... The egg is the perfect solution. A, absolutely. Thanks for the comment. Yeah, an egg is the perfect solution. Give it a try. I couldn't believe how great it made me feel. Now, the like the benefits are linked to the muscle function. So you could also incorporate a. a by the, so an egg is about seventy to eighty calories. It's like super, super um, low calorie per egg. So. You know, it's practically like, oh, here's the other benefit I, I noticed is that I felt way less hungry at night. I never expected that. I felt uh, like actually eating smaller portions. I just did. I felt more full throughout the day. And that correlates with what I read about it as well, that that's the effect. It helps with weight loss. And I've been on a, a diet to get down into my healthy BMI over the I got a little, a little overweight, about 10 or 15 pounds, but anyway, been taking that off and I'm now down in my right BMI and all that, but it was, believe it or not, when I started eating these eggs that I got, you know, down below the line, there's like, you know, whatever weight to height ratio that puts you in the, the zone. Uh oh, sounds like Blondie is ready to lay an egg. Uh, yeah, look, you're looking in the coop. How do I get back in there? All right, let's get you back in there. Nope. Chicken chaser. So fun having chickens. All right, here we go. Yeah, 
so we, uh, well, I'll, I'll tell you about the setup I've evolved to here, updates on that here in, in just a moment, but I plan on continuing to eat at least two eggs a day. And I think you could just eat two eggs, lightly salted, in the morning and try the experiment. I would, I would encourage everybody to try the healthy experiment of just, you know, preferably if you can locate, you know, organic eggs, good quality eggs because they'll be much higher in nutrients you know that's the thing is uh you want to get the high nutrient it's already nu nutrient dense food whether you get the organic ones or not but when you get the organic ones you're really elevating the value of them if you can get the ones that are organic and pasteurized that you know one step up from there Ooh, look at that. and um uh, yeah give it a try see the effect it has you know on your mental state on your energy state it's a useful health experiment, and with eggs costing about 20 cents an egg, it's the cost of an egg, roughly, uh, you know, a normal egg, it's an easy experiment to do. It's a, I would be, I look at eggs now as my ultimate supplement. I, I have no plan on stopping, and the, the research is also clear that uh, completely safe to have up to three eggs a day and, in your diet, and you don't need, and the only reason that I that they uh, stop there is to say they just haven't researched more. They haven't researched the higher numbers of eggs. You know, it's like how many eggs really is, you know, two's enough, uh, three's enough for me a day for sure. But um, yeah, the research is in that, that that doesn't have a bad effect on your, on the cholesterol and stuff like that. But you absolutely need cholesterol. Your body and brain functions on cholesterol. Your body produces cholesterol already. So if you don't give it cholesterol, it will produce it. If you give it more of the good cholesterol, it produces less. So it just down regulates your own body's production of cholesterol. And that's how a lot of systems work. One take from the other, just like my yard. Your body is like a permaculture system. Plugged into this system, which is another great principle of permaculture. Hey, camel, welcome. Appreciate you. Hope your day is going well. Darth Scar, yeah, I, let me know if you end up trying the, the two egg a day experiment there, poached egg, you know, high nutrient egg twice a day. It's cold outside? Man, it's not that cold here, but it, it does feel like fall. I mean, it was in the mid 80s yesterday, which is practically a practically cold here feels co much much cooler i actually we were swimming last night in the ocean and uh, the ocean water was about probably about 80 degrees and uh it, it was towards the end of the day and the air got down to about 80 degrees and i felt actually cold i had to because the wind was blowing i was like i'm almost too cold which is how acclimated you get to living in these tropical <clears throat> you know conditions i'm in actually zone 10a which is a little warm. But yeah, so stoked on these hens. Okay, here's the update on the on the uh, backyard coop. By the way, I still have not made my epic chicken coop building video. I took like a approximately a million videos while I built this thing. And they're all sitting in a ginormous pile that I'm just like, intimidated by but i need to just kind of piece it together and throw and show you how the journey of building this thing but this was a banana grove if you look back on old beach or backyard videos the chicken coop itself has just been t a plus 10 all the way but what we've ended up doing is uh expanding this access of the chickens both all the way to the fence which i had fenced off because i had some young plants in there but once now that they're a little bit higher the chickens can't get to them we're gonna leave them but now the chickens, I just open up the, the door in the morning and we have this one simple gate that we hook on with a piece of wire there and they really can't push through it. And now they can just go back and free range and get the bugs and forage and eat, eat compost and stuff that we put back there, food wastes we put back there too. And then they can jump right back in there and lay an egg if they want to. And I haven't, you know, I wonder if they've laid an egg I actually ate three eggs this morning. It was the first morning I've eaten three. 
but um, forge the hands from the areas we want to. The immediate mental state, positive change and effect. So, you know, I believe these are special birds that are being, have been raised incredibly healthy in incredibly healthy conditions and are fed very, very nutrient dense food. Therefore, the eggs are a special kind of magic, meaning the already awesomeness of the regular old grocery store egg you could buy fed corn all its life and kept in a box is still incredible not to be underestimated but once you once you turbocharge something that good you get real magic now i want to look at this part as we talk about nutrient dense chickens nutrient dense setup okay so all these systems feed each other in my yard and chickens will eat just about everything but they Love the nutrient dense stuff. I found one of the most nutrient dense things you could possibly plant is the moringa tree. The moringa tree will grow if it's very healthy about 10 feet a year. You can trim it like a shrub and keep it actually very low. It produces seeds you can eat. It's you can make tea out of it. You know, just the benefits are just incredible. So I planted them everywhere and I'll be harvesting their leaves and I'm gonna harvest them here, but this has more potassium than a banana, more vitamin C than an orange, you know, on and on and on, all these benefits. It's, it's a basically an, a multivitamin. And you could just eat it. I can just eat this and get the same benefit as the chickens. But if I'm feeding this to my chickens, this is also in my eggs. And I am feeding this to the chickens. So I like to believe I'm somewhat of a mad scientist of egg excellence. <laughs> But perhaps that's just my own little fantasy, but hey, it's working for me. Chicks get more and more nutritious. Everything you put in your chickens, oops, pull going out. Everything you put in your chickens will wind up in your eggs and then back in you. So look at how this simple system of growing, this is one of the easiest possible trees to grow, let me tell you. I've got videos on how to grow it if you're interested. I spent about $10 on a pack of seeds. I'll try to remember to leave a link. You can leave a thing in the comment if you want to link to that, you know, what I used. But uh, the point is that easiest thing in the world, now it's producing a ton of value. And it fits right into this system. My Moringa system fits right into the chicken system that fits right into my feel good system, feel energy system. <laughs> really incredible. Look at what they did to that. Think they like it? Hey, James, good to see you. Yeah, we're just feeding the, we're just uh, turbocharging these hen eggs with moringa. Yeah, throw it in there and they'll compost it. Let's say, let's give a shout out to the hen's work back here. Look at this. This may look like a mess. It is perfection. This is what heaven looks like. This is a healthy ecosystem of bugs and a constantly composted layer of organic matter and sand and soil all mixed together. These hens all day will just scratch and work to keep this back area turned over. And as they do it, as they break down all these leaves, as they scratch around and eat bugs, they're leaving fertilizer with each, <laughs> each step practically. So it's just incredible. I've got to get back here with the pitchfork and start turning it over a bit. I've been watching Edible Acres. I think that's called Edible Acres. Yeah, I like his channel. And uh, his approach with chickens is just, I think, incredible. And I've been trying to, to replicate that here on each backyard. But uh, yeah, this is something like the high tunnel concept, but we're just moving through from from one side to to the other and back, you know, just kind of moving nutrients all around. The chickens naturally remove it all around, but we just throw in like, I've got some, you know, weeds, every bit of 
so-called weeds, natural plants that grow around. Now I just throw back in there, they chow it down. Um, every bit of leaves we put back here almost. Uh, you, food waste constantly, everything that we have food waste goes back in here. And uh, it's all converted into this richness and the bug amount is incredible. In fact, I'll let you in on a little interesting fact here and that is that these hens, Jack goes, hey, does that chicken have us eating a rope? And we looked at it, oh no, it's a snake. It was a, it was a little snake that the chicken said, but not that little, like probably a foot long, but really skinny, a little rat snake. I think it was red rat snake that one of the chickens had killed and they ate that snake right down. And that was kind of interesting moment there. Um, but yeah, they are chickens and they will eat just about anything. These little lizards that go back here, this is not a happy place to be a lizard. You do not want to be one of these little lizards hopping around back here because these chickens are going to go after you so fast. They just instinct kicks in and out. that lizard's days are numbered. Seconds are numbered. Look at that. Don't they, they run just like the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park? <laughs> Getting some treats. All right, let's do a quick update. I don't have that much more time. Appreciate everybody that jumps on, jumped on. So I'm gonna look back on the comments. Uh, Treasure Outdoors, good to see you, man. By the way, Treasure Outdoors, your backyard setup looks to me like a little slice of heaven. I was watching your mulberry growing video where you grew like all those cuttings from your, it looks like an ever-bearing mulberry. That was really cool. I would love to have ducks. When I see your stuff, I'm like, ah, I'd love to have ducks. I can't have ducks here though, I'm not allowed to. But. Anyhow, okay, let's see. All right, so the Moringa update. Yeah, so first the Roselle, Roselli, as they like to say in some areas. Look at that, it's just getting huge. I, It had kind of had the tilt on it, but I, I gave it the, uh, these miracle grow stakes. I bought a whole bunch of these little stakes. They're about mm, four, I don't know, maybe four feet long and fiberglass, solid fiberglass stakes. I'd gotten the hollow stakes like this one, but they, they fold over, they're kind of weak. They can fold over and fail, whereas these are really, really uh, strong. I can't see them really folding over any way you tried. So hammered these in and I just tape it up with a little bit of uh, grafting you know, cellophane tape type thing. And uh, it loved that and it tilted right towards the sun. But you can see, I've noticed now, this is my first year growing these Roselli, that they produce this beautiful hibiscus flower, which then falls off and then the catalyst continues to grow like this. And of course, that'll be what the, uh, you know, I've seen these full size before, but I've never grown them all the way through. So now I understand just by observing another permaculture principle that I love observe and interact just by observing and interacting with this plant like staking it up and watching its growth habits seeing where it does well seeing where it does poorly oh thanks man yeah your stuff's incredible by the way uh treasure outdoors i don't know what kind of sugar canes you have we should probably consider trading some cut things or something man uh, I'm looking to increase my variety of stuff back here since the whole yard is just you know you know I kind of go bananas so to speak plenty more stuff anyway so look at look at these I can't believe how big that is that looks bigger than the ones that I had seen on the other plants uh, of friends so hmm. might be all the bunny manure Here's another Moringa, plant a multi-trunk. This is an experiment I've been doing. Plant them very close together. Grow so fast, it's incredible. I'd say the 10 foot a year estimate is probably not an overestimate. I'm gonna wait for them to get to be about 10 feet before I chop them way down to about three feet, maybe two feet. And then we'll start the shrubby, shrubbery. Uh, the backyard banana grove expansion continues to do well. I've added even more. I put another pup in right there. This is a new one. You can see this is how they start for me typically. The, the wiltiness I tolerate. They're just going to kind of look me for a little while and then they'll pick up in their vigor. Um, 
I've just planted a ton of them here. I don't know if the, I don't know if the bananas that I planted in the chicken coop area are gonna do well because the chickens really scratch a lot and I, you know, I just don't know if the pups will do well. So this is my backup plan so that I get the banana production right back on track again after you know, removing and um, dismantling my banana grove and transplanting it. I also transplanted it here so I'd have it on the south side of my lawn. This is, a, of course, a good place to have bananas on the south side. It gets plenty of sun. Uh, you can see I've got one hand that we've been tracking here. It's getting there. It's getting almost there. Not quite. I'm going to... Yeah, pollination, what varieties of bananas do I have? Okay, so that was a Musa. I, I could, I've got the name written down somewhere that I think it is, but anyway, it's, let's say it's giant Musa. Uh, this is Cavendish, dwarf Cavendish. I've got lots of those. Uh, this is what I've been told is apple bananas. Uh, I th think... I may have one other type, perhaps an Orinoco in here growing somewhere, which is more or less a plantain type style, but definitely uh, a cool banana. So yeah, those are the varieties. The Muse is really the champion, you know, uh, even though it's quite large, but it just does so well. So, you know, you find stuff that does well. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, the Orinocos are not as common here. A lot of people do the Cavendish and the, you know, well, ice cream bananas and all that kind of stuff. But I may get some more varieties, certainly. I'm kind of, uh, you know, as they say, going bananas for bananas here now because I've just experienced how to do it, do them correctly now. And I have the hydra dehydrator. So that's a another game changer for me is the ability to store food, store fruit specifically. So I've been using that food dehydrator. I really enjoyed it with the mangoes and was able to save a lot. A lot of those mangoes went to waste because I didn't have a way to handle them, to process them. And next year I won't make that mistake. We're going to turn those mangoes into, I'm going to connect with as many other nodes in the permaculture universe as I can to trade mangoes for things they have. I'm getting ready to trade. I'm started to trade eggs now for a friend of mine who's excellent at woodworking and he is going to build me. This is a great topic, by the way. I should probably have a separate video on this, but if you have a comment on this or an idea, please let me know. To build me the, uh, the artwork, the decorative piece that will go over this. Now, I intentionally left these two, uh, these two vertical two by fours in place in order to put something over this. And this is, of course, the Zen Bunny Run, but I don't know what I would want to put there, but just about anything woodworking wise could could be what we put there so I've got to decide and then the other thing is this chicken coop I've got the I did the same thing here so I want to do something where we have a, a piece that could go all the way across the front here and then I might ask to put something here so we're going to go with a little bit more art which is going to I think be awesome I can't wait but that's going to be an exam that's an example of one more node to node connection where using the output of systems in my yard to get things that I want and need back into the yard with the old trade ski. And it, when you have the ultra eggs and people give them a try and can feel the feeling of the ultra eggs, they like it. Can't get eggs like this easily. And I've wondered if my desire to the ultra egg tornado. I wonder if my desire to have chickens was really linked to a nutrient deficiency I was sensing in myself that made me crave having eggs. And it was just a complicated way to get there. Because I really had the strong desire. Now that I got to the outcome of it, I'm like, oh, it all makes sense. <laughs> Maybe this is like a pregnant women craving ice cream or something you know it's like a whole <laughs> you're sensing you need the thing and you you just kind of get there you need the nutrient
this area has really oh cackle fest yeah the cackle fest 2021 last time exactly palm nation that was traumatic and uh bewildering and inspiring it was exciting confusing cackle fest chickens just start going insane in the membrane yeah those chickens on that last live stream just yeah at one point just started to go ultra cackle fest level five cackle fest perhaps five plus it could happen today but i i don't know that it will now, hold on i gotta find out what time it's hey what time is it hmm. i don't okay let me know when you're leaving my daughter has a volleyball game, which I am super stoked to go see. I love watching the volleyball. To me, it's one of the most fun sports to watch. It's super exciting. Anyway, yeah, we'll see if the Cackle Fest starts. We'll go back and visit the hens here, see if we can provoke a Cackle Fest. Uh, I did. Oh, there you go. Here. No. All right, I did take out one cane from this sugarcane clump in here, and this is sugarcane and lemongrass. Sugarcane, it's my version of the mother of three or whatever, the three sisters, whatever it's called. It, anyway, it, it's a terrific combo. I, I took out one of the canes here and a beautiful red sugarcane, and I transplanted it to a sugarcane grove, which I might show in the live stream tonight. My work on the side of my yard, also related to another key permaculture principle, which is utilize edge spaces. Holy moly, I've been utilizing edge spaces. This is an edge space, right? Everything along the side of my house is an edge space. Um, and I've been focusing on utilizing them now. And look at this setup, folks. Yeah. There, I, and when I show this setup, I know that there are folks that believe rabbits require air conditioning. But I actually chose these rabbits very carefully to not require air conditioning. And they are the key. And I'm going to tell you, they are the key. They are a connective piece of this yard that if you take it out, the whole thing falls apart. They were the game changer. They were the reason why everything looks the way it looks now. It is those bunnies. There is no question in my mind that they were the catalyst, the game changer of everything here and then followed that up with the vermiculture, which is the game changer. Soon I'll be doing the biochar. Uh, been supplementing with micronutrients. Started doing that. Just uh, Yeah, Palm Nation, am I getting a cow? It depends on what you mean by cow, of course. <laughs> I would love a goat. I would love a goat that I could train to only make those bizarre sounds when I wanted to hear them. It would, be, it would be incredible to have a cow. But I can't figure out how to have cows, you know, three blocks from the ocean. I know I've been to places in Costa Rica where they figured out how to have a lot of cows right, right next to the beach. But here it has been a challenge. You know, it's interesting thing is rabbits. Rabbits are not considered livestock. Mm -hmm. In America, they're pets. In many countries, they're considered livestock. And therefore, you could have them in your yard. Also, another good, quite easily, if you just set up a little system like we've got here. Uh, and you could also, if you didn't have, if you wanted to go with a smaller type of animal that gives you similar level of nutrients, you could go with guinea pigs. But I don't know anything about guinea pigs. I should get an, another queen palm. Yeah, to replace. Yeah, you see the queen palm over here. That's, that's the queen palm, the fungi among guys. Got it. You're right, I should get another queen palm. I should grow queen palms. Actually, I'll show you the Eureka palm seeds that I planted over here, Palm Nation. Give you a quick update on, on those. I had been feeding the, the Eureka fruit to the chickens and um, I just threw a bunch of them in a pot over here about two or three weeks ago, maybe.
and th this will give you an example of the better homes and gardens, but um, you'll find it in each your backyard because <laughs> this is like steamed vegetables or yeah, you want some more. You see that to-go box, you get excited. But look at this, palms, growing palms is, is so fun. And what I've learned over the years, just based on my experience is that depending on the type of palm, the growth characteristics, the germination, success rate, the, the time it takes to germ, all are different. But one thing that are, is the same with palms is the ability for them to grow simply by being placed on the surface of, yeah, look at this one, on the surface of the soil. These were simply the pits of the Eureka fruit that I was eating and, to and tossing to the chickens to eat. Tastes like bananas, kind of. Banana cucumbers, I'd call it maybe. And just threw them in here and now left in the shade. They get plenty of water because it's been raining and they grow. You can plant that in a pot and you'll have a beautiful sugarcane Eureka palm native of Madagascar. Uh, also, think about the thing about sprouts is they are really high nutrient, like an egg, right? What's the egg of a plant? An egg of a plant is a seed, in my way of looking at it. So if you didn't want to grow an areca palm, you could throw it in here and let it soften up, and maybe the chickens would peck on it a bit. Or maybe those nutrients that are in there are going to return into the soil. So it's, you know, I think not a bad idea to get everything growing. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Well, looks like it's my time to go on to the next phase. I certainly do appreciate everybody that jumped on the live stream. Super fun. Oh, wow. Well, all right. I'm going to jump off. I hope you have a great day and thanks for watching Eat Your Backyard.